applications are now being accepted for the radiographic, social media, and digital innovation team. Practicing radiologists or trainees are invited to apply by February 12th, 2024. Hi, my name is Dr. Jonathan Revels from New York University. Welcome to the RSNA Radiographics Podcast. Today, we'll be discussing the Radiographics Update article on Lung CT Screening Reporting and Data System, Lung RADS, 2022, by Drs. Martin, Caney, Roderick, Kazaruni, and Meyer. Introduced by the American College of Radiology, Lung RADS standardizes reporting and management recommendations for lung cancer screening. The 2022 update includes new criteria for atypical pulmonary cysts and cavitary nodules, clarification on juxtapleural and airway nodules, and a revised approach to nodule growth and management. It also addresses slow-growing nodules and introduces a stepped management approach for follow-up examinations. The update aims to incorporate recent research, clarify previous guidelines, and reduce overdiagnosis. Let's talk about the new additions first, which include atypical pulmonary cysts and cavitary nodules. Did you know that lung cancers with cystic components are more common than we previously thought? In fact, 0.5 to 9.3% of lung cancers have cystic elements visible at initial imaging. But here's the catch. These types of lesions are often under-recognized, which can lead to a delay in diagnosis. That's why the LungRADS 2022 update is so crucial. It introduces new criteria for classifying and managing atypical pulmonary cysts, categorizing them between LungRADS 3 and 4B. So what makes a pulmonary cyst atypical and potentially suspicious? There are a few key features to look out for, which include thick or asymmetric walls, the presence of an associated nodule, internal septations, or growth. All of these features are further described in detail in the latest LungRADS document. Now let's discuss the second new addition to LungRADS 2022, cavitary nodules. We should treat cavitary nodules in the same way we treat solid nodules, basing our approach off of the mean total diameter. But how do we differentiate a cavitary nodule from an atypical lung cyst? The answer lies in the dominant feature. If the dominant feature of the lesion is solid, then it's managed as a solid cavitary nodule. On the other hand, if the cystic component is more prominent, then it's approached as an atypical lung cyst. This distinction is crucial for accurate categorization and treatment of these lesions. But here's an important twist. If there's suspicion of infection, Lung RADS 2022 recommends placing the cavitary nodule into category zero, which calls for a follow-up low-dose chest CT in one to three months. This approach allows for close monitoring and ensures timely intervention of the lesion if needed. Now let's review how Lung RADS 2022 has helped to clarify juxtapleural and airway nodules. First, some background. Intrapulmonary lymph nodes can appear on any pleural surface. These include the fissures, as well as costal, mediastinal, and diaphragmatic pleura. Now, why is this important? Well, earlier studies have shown that nodules in these areas, especially perifissural nodules, are quite common on lung cancer screening studies. In fact, they're detected in almost 30% of these exams. In response to these findings, the previous lung RADS 1.1 added perifissural nodules to its category 2. This categorization is based on specific definitions, like having smooth, margins, and being less than 10 millimeters in diameter, amongst other features. These nodules are generally believed to be benign lymph nodes, and this isn't just a guess. A large series, when applying strict criteria based on the size and shape of these nodules, found that none turned out to be malignant on follow-up. Lung RADS 2022 also introduced the term juxtapleural nodules that essentially expands the definition of a perifissural nodule to include those that are located along the costal, mediastinal, and diaphragmatic pleural surfaces. This expansion in definition is based on new data indicating that the criteria for perifissural nodules can be safely applied to juxtapleural nodules, whether found on the initial screen or follow-up studies. So what does this mean for lung cancer screening? It means that we now have clearer understanding of how to categorize these nodules, which significantly impacts the screening process and helps us avoid unnecessary workup of a benign nodule. 
Let's turn our attention to the reclassification of endobronchial nodules that are now termed airway nodules. Previously in LungRADS 1.1, endobronchial nodules were mostly categorized under 4A. However, with new insights, these nodules, which again are now termed airway nodules, are classified more broadly into categories 0, 2, 4A, or 4B. This shift is significant as it allows for a more nuanced approach based on imaging features and likelihood of malignancy. So what can the imaging features tell us? Well, features that suggest a benign cause of an airway nodule include a subsegmental location, the presence of multiple tubular endobronchial abnormalities without a central obstructive lesion, and the presence of air. Suspicious airway nodule features include a solid nodule located in a segmental or more proximal airway. If a segmental or more proximal airway nodule is found to be stable or growing on follow-up examinations, it's now going to be upgraded to LungRADS 4B. This is crucial because it triggers a new management strategy, including the option for clinical evaluation, which takes a more proactive approach to ensure that a potential malignancy is not being overlooked. Let's unpack two more areas that LungRADS 2022 has improved the definitions of, nodule growth and the management of slow-growing nodules. In the past, nodule growth was measured in any dimension, but now it's defined more precisely as an increase in the mean nodule diameter. Additionally, the time frame for assessing this growth has been clarified and set at 12 months. These changes provide a more standardized and reliable measure for growth assessment and lung cancer screening studies. Another key update when it comes to nodule growth is about reclassification of a growing nodule. So if a nodule crosses a size threshold between categories, then it should be reclassified and managed according to the new category. This is true even if the specific definition of growth hasn't been met. This approach ensures that any significant change in nodule size is being appropriately addressed, which again is regardless of growth rate. Now on to slow growing nodules. LungRADS 2022 has introduced specific notes for these. For ground glass nodules, if there's no growth greater than 1.5 millimeters over 12 months, they remain in category two. This holds even if the cumulative growth over multiple screening studies is demonstrated. However, if there are other signs of growth in a ground glass nodule, like a new solid component, this should be managed now as a part solid nodule. The approach differs though for slow growing solid and part solid nodules. If these nodules grow less than 1.5 millimeters over 12 months, but show growth greater than 1.5 millimeters across multiple screening studies, they may be upgraded to category 4B. This leads to a recommendation for diagnostic evaluation, and it's a nuanced approach that recognizes the different behaviors of these various nodules. The last two LungRADS 2022 topics we're going to discuss are step management approach and changes in categorizing infectious or inflammatory findings. The step management approach is all about how we handle follow-up examinations. In LungRADS 2022, the timing for follow-up low-dose chest CTs is now based on the date of the current examination, rather than the baseline exam that triggered the follow-up. This change simplifies the process and makes it much more straightforward. Another important change is in the reassignment of nodule categories during follow-up. If category 3 and 4A nodules are unchanged or smaller, they are now downgraded to the next lowest lung grads category. But remember that this does not apply to airway nodules. This is a shift from the previous guidelines in lung grads 1.1 where these nodules were immediately downgraded to category two. Also, if a nodule resolves or is confirmed as benign, the most concerning finding will still dictate the new category. Lastly, let's review infectious or inflammatory findings. LungRADS 2022 has refined its approach here as well. While LungRADS 1.1 allowed for potentially infectious and inflammatory nodules to be categorized as 4B or 4X, the new system reassigns these findings to category 0 and 2. The follow-up options include low-dose chest CT in 1 to 3 months or 1 year, respectively.
Category zero is for indeterminate findings suggestive of infection or inflammation. Examples include multiple new nodules, new solid nodules greater than or equal to eight millimeters, and segmental or low bar consolidation. On the other hand, category two is for findings considered benign, like new tree and bud opacities or new ground glass nodules that are less than three centimeters. You as the radiologist can use your discretion to assign segmental and multiple tubular endobronchial abnormalities with no central obstructing lesion to either category zero or two. So this concludes our deep dive into the update of LungRads 2022. I hope you all enjoyed it. And thank you to Drs. Martin, Caney, Broderick, Casaruni, and Meyer for putting together this excellent radiographics update that I encourage all of our listeners to go and check out.